Hello again. Over the past 40 years, we've seen a dramatic increase in the use of prisons to combat crime. Incarceration rates have skyrocketed. We now have more than a million and a half people serving time in U.S. prisons. Some of them are going to be there for decades or until they die. While inmates are confined, prison officials are responsible for ensuring their facilities are safe, secure, and humane. This includes providing inmates with appropriate health care. The overall budget for state correction spending has nearly quadrupled over the past 20 years, making it the fastest growing budget item after Medicaid. Telemedicine can help prison systems hold down the costs of inmate health care, even those that have doctors on staff. Smaller prisons might be able to engage the services of doctors in their own communities for episodic care. But security screening is very tight for outside physicians because medical instruments can be used as weapons and drugs are a valuable contraband. And literally for their own protection, they need to be escorted through the prison. Inmate health care often begins with a staff nurse. Some may successfully game the system, faking symptoms to get a trip outside to see a doctor. Without a doctor's consultation, it may be up to the prison administrators to decide whether an inmate's condition warrants a trip to the physician's office. Taking prisoners outside isn't cheap because of the security risk. And the risk doesn't end even when an inmate is accompanied by two detention officers. Once inside a medical facility, an inmate can become unruly. Pepper spray is discouraged because it can cause harm to cardiopulmonary patients in the hospital if distributed by the ventilation system. And most hospital exam rooms are some of the most dangerous artificial environments. So using a taser is unwise in an environment filled with oxygen and flammable liquids. Exam rooms often have glass doors. They are typically filled with sharp objects, blunt force instruments, biohazards, dangerous gases, and dangerous objects jet out from the walls. And officers can't assume the hospital staff has had formal training on how to restrain an inmate patient. All of which makes prison administrators and healthcare providers uneasy about inmate patients seeing doctors on the outside. To keep transportation and staffing costs under control, an inmate with a non-life-threatening condition might have to wait days until the next scheduled bus trip. Using a telemedicine solution, a doctor can assess the patient and tell prison administrators how serious that inmate's condition may be and whether a trip to an outside specialist or hospital is even warranted. Or at least determine whether an inmate's complaint is in fact real. If it is, a telemedicine consult with a remote physician can open the door to more timely care, most likely on the same day an inmate complains of being ill. About 20 states have turned over inmate health care to private companies. Some of them bring doctors inside with telemedicine. This can help financially strapped state governments to keep a lid on costs by making health care more predictable, especially with follow-up visits for chronic conditions. And it places the decision about a higher level of health care for an inmate where it should be with a doctor. However, a telemedicine program is no guarantee against poor judgment or inmate neglect. One thing for sure, healthcare decisions made about inmates should be based on the need, not on the health of the Corrections Department budget. I'm Joel Bartholomew. I've posted other video blogs on medical licensure and on the disconnect between urgent care centers and primary care physicians. If you get a chance, check them out. I'd like to hear your ideas about them or on this correctional telemedicine video. Email them to me. 
You'll find the address on this page. 